What up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your guy something something something. Hit the keys here today with a quick tutorial on mixing down your beats and NPC beats. Uh, make sure if you guys like this content that you drop a whole elbow on that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so every time we bring you new content, you could be the first to see. Um, this is basically for beginners, but if you're an advanced user, you might get something out of it too. But let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Some, some, some hit the key. Um, so this right here is basically um, the beat that I'm going to use today uh, to mix down. Um, it's nothing too big or drastic. It's just got a few different melodies and some drums on it. So I'll go ahead and play it. All right, so as you can see right now, it is a muddled mess of I need to be mixed down. Um, so what we're gonna do first, what I like to do first when I mix down a beat is um, you can either hit this channel mixer button um, or you can hit the pad mixer because we're gonna mix down drums too, but I'm gonna start off with melodies because that's what I like to start off with. So you can hit that button or you can hit control six and it'll take you right to the mixer. Um, down here at the bottom of the mixer, it has your instruments. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I like to make all my melodies at 18 as a start bass point. Um, so I'm going to solo this one and I'm going to watch the meter here and I'm going to wait for it to get to 18 as I pull down on this lever. Another thing that I like to do before I start mixing in this program is I turn off the maximizer because I want to get the beat to be as big and full as I can get it before I put the maximizer on there because the maximizer's essence is a limiter. Um, so. Now that noise for me is going to be the noise that sits in the middle of my beat. So I'm going to leave that alone from that perspective. Uh, but one thing I wanted to show you guys was um, this EQ. Here's a free EQ. It's called TDR Nova. Um, and this EQ is like a visual EQ. So I would recommend that you download this if you're new or e even if you're a pro. Um, I normally use like Fab Filter or something like that. But, you know, this is free. Um, and with this plugin, you can actually see where your instrument sitting in the mix. So if you tap this in button, it'll show you what's going into this. And so when you push play, you've seen all this right here was moving around in the track. So um, what I'm gonna wanna do is I wanna get rid of a lot of the low end so that the low end doesn't clash. Um, so something that I wanted to show you guys, um, this is going to be, uh, kind of cheesy, but it's a good way to look at how you're mixing your stuff down. So when you mix, let's compare, uh, mixing music to drawing a picture or an art palette. So here's your palette, right? So with the palette, if you draw one character here, and then you draw another character on top of it. And then you draw another character on top of it. And then you draw another character on top of that. It's all a muddled mess, right? You can't even see what you originally drew. So think of mixing the same way. Think of when you're EQing things and you're panning instruments the same way as you would think of a piece of art. So like, let's say we're looking at an instrument. So an orchestra is set up to where you have flutes one way, uh, you have you know more brasses and stuff another way, piano in the middle, drums in the middle, because it's put in stereo for you. So like, let's say in our mix, this is our sub or this is our bass. So we're gonna put that at the bottom, right? So we're gonna wanna EQ all the frequencies out so that we don't cover it up in our picture of art. I mean, if that makes sense to you, we wanna make sure that we separate all of our different sounds and all of our different frequencies. And so that's what we're doing with EQ and panning our instruments. So next we're gonna have whatever is the main focal point of our um, piece of music. So boom, right in the middle is where we're gonna have, let's say the piano. 
or our vocals. That stuff's going to sit in the middle, the kick drum. All that's going to sit right here. So you can't have your guitars both sitting in the same part of the melody or the frequency because it's going to, what's it going to do? It's going to cover up that piano. So what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and pan um, maybe to the left or right a guitar. So now we have a guitar over here and we've taken out the bottom frequency. So that's what we're going to do with our EQ. I'm going to show you more on that. And so now it's not sitting in the same frequency range as this. Yeah, it's a, uh, in the mid frequency range, but we panned it over to the left. So now it's over to the left and you know it's not in the way of the mid. So now you can hear that instrument a little clearer. So what's next? Uh, let's say we're going to get another guitar. So boom, now we have that guitar panned over here. So now, you know, it's spread out through the, the frequency range. The same, we're going to do the same with the mids and the highs. You know, we're going to EQ out all the lows so that we can hear them. So your hi-hats might sit up here in the middle. Um, you know, your snare is going to sit over here a little bit. So it's spreading out all your sounds. It's got your kick, your bass down here. Um, and then what's next? Maybe if you got a flute and a beat. You know, you want to EQ out all the lows so that the flute sits up here and so that you can hear it. And so basically this visual, um, I guess, visualization that I put together, I know it's cheesy, but basically think about your, your EQing and your panning of your instruments um, and your mix like this picture. All your different sounds have to sit in a different picture or place in the beat, the spectrum of the beat, so that you can hear them. Otherwise, you're just going to get this you know what i'm saying so again i know this is cheesy but i figured this was a good visual on how i could show you about eqing before i start eqing and panning these instruments so now that i've done that what i'm going to do here is with this um nova eq is that i'm going to hit uh hp and i'm basically i want to drag this over to somewhere between 100 to 120 because that's basically gonna cut out all those lower end frequencies. So you see how um, when it goes to out, when you're looking at it in out, it doesn't show any of these anymore. When it says in, that's what's coming in. So we basically cut those frequencies out so that we can unmask more of the sub frequency or the 808 frequency. Um, so uh, you're gonna wanna listen to your 808 and everything like that. And you wanna listen to all your sounds when you start EQing. Um, but I already know that I just want to take that out because I don't want it to mud up with my kick and my 808. Um, so what I like to do is I like to get all my melodies together and then I mix everything else in from there. I'm not saying that's the right way or the wrong way. Some people like to put their kick drum in first and build their beat around their kick drum. Some people like to put their 808 in first and build around their 808. I'm just showing you the way that I like to do it. So what I would do next is I would come over to my next, um, melodic sound and I would put that in so it's going to be this two bleed so I want that to go to the right so that I'm going to open up more room in that spectrum and I'm going to put that same Nova EQ on this um, so that I can cut out the lower frequencies because again I want to make room since that's got a nice um, frequency range, it's going to meet a little bit of my highs and my mids for me. So you see that's going to go up to about 14K. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that high pass on so it cuts off all that lowness down there because we don't need it. You can't hear it anywhere in the beat. And I want you to notice another thing. So as I've panned that to the, to the right, you can hear the instrument more. So listen. So it's standing out in the beat a little more. So now we're gonna take um, these bells that I have here and we're going to um, pan those to the left. So I'm gonna turn that down too because I only want that to be about 18. So listen to this with everything straight down the middle. So 
so with everything straight down the middle, you can't hear everything is clear. I guess if that makes sense. So that's basically what I wanted to show you guys with that. Make sure that you guys are always panning your instruments right to left so that they come through in the mix clear. A lot of times you might hear a song and you don't understand why everything sounds all muddy. That's part of the reason why. All right. Um, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna put my 808 in, 808, 808 in next. Um, so let's go ahead and go to that. All right, and so for me, I like to have my 808 sit about nine um, on the dB meter. Um, that way it's not too loud, it's not taking up everything. It gives an artist room to rap on the beat and then somebody to master the song. A lot of times you watch these YouTube tutorials and they tell you, make the kick at zero or three and make the 808 at three. Well, if you do that, you're not really making a beat for a rapper. You're just making a beat to put on YouTube, which is fine. If that's what you're doing, then make the beat as loud as possible. But if you're making the beat in order for artists to get on the beat, then you might want to, you know, scale things down, you know, make the 808 about nine, maybe make the kick drum somewhere between, you know, six and nine. Um, that way, once the artist gets on there, they can have with their recording on there, the DB over here on this final meter can be somewhere around three to five. And then the person that masters the song can make it up to, you know, zero or 0 0.1 DBs. So here's what it's going to sound like with the 808 in there. All right, so next what I wanna do is I wanna go into my pads and I want to mix down my drums. Um, that's the cool thing about this program. When you record all your drums onto the same, um, to the same, I don't know if it's called a program or a same sequence, um, the same group, you can just go to a mixer and solely mix your drums. Um, and then when you look down here, this is what it's gonna be assigned to on the pad. So A01, A02 is what I used. Um, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, I inloaded or I, I used some some drums from a kit. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come over here to the pad mixer, and we're gonna take this all the way over to the right. And I like to have like my clap like somewhere around ten, eleven. I like to have my hi hats like twelve. Um, I like to have my snare maybe about the same as my clap. You know, somewhere around ten to twelve. Um, so we're just gonna go through this, and we're gonna turn things up and down. What I like to do is I like to start with the kick and then I go from there. Um, so, but I'm just gonna let everything play out and then I'm just going to, um, you know, basically mix the beat like that. So I'll explain what I'm doing for each one. So on this beat, I might just leave the the kick at nine because it's shining through on the 808 pretty good. Um, so now the next thing I'm gonna go to. So I want that rim shot to be like somewhere around like 10 to 11. I want that snare again to be somewhere around 10 to 11. And then again, a lot of a lot of times when you hear a beat, the clap is just too loud. I want my clap to be somewhere between 10 and 12. My hi-hat, I want that to be like 12.
And the little things that you can do is you can pan your instruments, your drums left and right if you want to. Like, so you can go in and you can draw an automation clip on your hi-hats, make them go back and forth from speaker to speaker. Uh, we're not gonna do that today. Um, I just wanted to basically show you guys how to use the mixer, um, show you guys a little EQ trip, get you guys a little visual EQ um, meter so that you can use in order to um, EQ your beats and give you a little better understanding of that. Um, the last thing I wanna show you guys is now that I have the beat kind of mixed down, so this isn't like a full mix, this was just a quick mix, um, you know, to give you guys some kind of general idea. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the maximizer. So with the maximizer, um, you can, you don't have to, or you can use it, but if you do decide to use it, uh, what you have to pay attention to with this is um, the ceiling that it's set at. Um, so like, let's say um, the beat right now is hitting at, So the beat is hitting somewhere like right around here. Um, so now if I throw this maximizer on there, wherever I set the ceiling at is where it's going to land right here. So if I turn it down to six, it's gonna basically turn down my beat and make my ceiling right here somewhere around this area. But if I turn the ceiling up, uh, you know, to whatever, four, it's gonna make it, you know, somewhere like right around here. And the higher that I turn up the ceiling, the louder that it allows the beat to be or the louder that it'll make the beat to be. If you make everything super loud and you make everything knock and then you put this ceiling on there and it'll start squashing your sounds and start making your sound sound a little bit, um, I don't want to say distorted, but it'll just squash the sound. It won't give it the sound that it had when you're making, as you're making the beat. So I would always recommend, I honestly don't use a maximizer or a limiter on my final on my master track, but I was just explaining it to you in case you want to know what that is when it's on there. So you can always just turn it off like that and boom, it's gone. Um, so that's basically mixing a track without throwing too many plugins or anything on there like that. The more plugins that you add though, the more of this uh, spectrum that you're going to fill up. So like when you start adding reverbs, now it's gonna make that guitar wider. You know, when you start adding delays, it's gonna make these flutes and the guitars and everything like that louder um, and, or wider. So um, just remember that when you guys are mixing down your beats and all that good stuff, uh, make sure if you guys like this comment, there is content that you guys like, you subscribe, you hit that notification bell. Um, let me know what other tutorials you guys wanna see. So else you wanna see, if you guys wanna see more complex, uh, mixing tutorials you want to see more beat cookups and um npc beats i got some samples um chopping coming pretty soon for some tutorials so um again i appreciate you guys more than you know y'all have a good one peace all right guys and gals thanks for watching the video uh make sure you hit the subscribe and like button uh make sure you hit that notification bell so every time a new video comes out you can be the first to know uh let me know what tutorials you want to see next in the comments and see you next time Some, some, some hit the key.